All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for joining today for another Microsoft Reactor stream. My name is Megan Lewis, and I'm excited to be here to talk about how to become a blockchain developer. So today, what we're going to do in this stream is have more of a fireside chat, and I'm going to be joined in just a moment by York Rhodes, who is the Director of Digital Transformation and founding blockchain team member at Microsoft. Uh, we are going to basically look into the life of a blockchain developer and get to ask uh, a series of questions with York to, to learn a little bit more about blockchain development. So uh, I hope that you have your questions ready. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. And I will go ahead and, and bring in York now. Hello. Hello. Welcome, York. How's it going today? Very good. How about you? Yeah, doing really well. Uh, we were just talking about it's very hot here. So <laughs> uh, sorry if, I, if I'm sweating, but thank you so much for, for being with us today. Um, yeah, I guess I kind of gave the background to the stream. It's going to be you know more of a conversational and kind of just hearing from you about your experiences and just talking all about blockchain and specifically blockchain development. So um, please keep the questions coming and I'll do my best to keep an eye on those, but let's go ahead and just kick things off with some of the questions that I prepared, if that's all right. All right, let's go. So to begin with, I mean, I guess, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, what do you do at Microsoft? How did you get involved with Microsoft, uh, with blockchain to begin with? Um, so I, I have sort of a, a long career in, um, yeah, up until blockchain, I would say, by mistake, jumping on brand new technologies like innovative technologies, whether it was you know when PCs first came on the scene, I know that makes me very old. <laughs> uh, to uh, client server databases, client server email, um, the wireless internet, uh, e-commerce, um, and in 2014, I uh, returned to Microsoft actually um, and was doing a lot of partner work. And through that partner work. Uh, sort of fell into um, a lot of material about blockchain. Um, and so that's sort of the begin very beginning of my, my blockchain journey. And I can go into a little bit about more about that. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that with us. Um, yeah, I'm excited to hear more. It does sound like you've kind of had a, a long career journey so far, um, but very, very exciting. <laughs> um, so I, I guess, Maybe let's get into some Microsoft specific questions and, and kind of again, just like thinking more about, you know, your role, like what's a typical day in the life for you, uh, you know, particularly in, in the role of this uh, director of digital transformation? Um, you want to start actually, let's let's take that to question next. Let's start with um, ah. what, you want to do the Microsoft journey, the blockchain journey. At Microsoft. Yeah. OK, yeah, let's start there and then okay. we can move. move, move so forward. the reason I sort of push that around is because my the Microsoft blockchain journey very much is the same as my blockchain journey, because I actually got Microsoft into blockchain um, in 2015, along with uh, another colleague uh, who was sort of on the same journey of discovery. Um, the what happened to me after being back at Microsoft for about six months, um, so this would be early 2015, I started seeing a lot of developer uh, concepts and terminology popping up in places you know that I never expected them, like in my social feed and other places. Mm -hmm. um, so I started reading about you know directed acyclic graphs, which is you know essentially a DAG if you're a, a blockchain person. Um, one of the key you know capabilities uh, of, of you know a lot of different blockchain systems. Um, I started reading about, you know, this guy Merkle and Merkle trees and uh, how those are interesting, you know, in, in this concept. And after a while, basically realized that, oh, this is all about this new technology people are talking about called blockchain. And coincidentally, um, because I've been teaching at e-commerce at NYU for a while, I'd actually been teaching about alternative payment methodology in the e-commerce space, one of which was Bitcoin you know, what sort of the grandfather of uh, the concept of blockchain technology. Um, right. And uh, so when I sort of put those two things together, I started my journey, my personal discovery journey, which was, you know, is this a technology that is going to have uh, a, a lot of meaningful value in a way that some of the other technology waves that I had ridden did? 
um, uh, inclusive of the internet, right? Like if you can, if you look at this technology, it goes pretty low down to a protocol level, right? So, um, you know, would it would it have some of the same impact as the internet has had, and and, and why is this unique? You know, after all the different technologies I've looked at in in my career, why is this technology all of a sudden unique and interesting? What makes mm -hmm. this convention special? Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so I studied literally for about six months to, you know, answer those questions. Um, and I emerged. The more I studied, the more I was intrigued, and the more I started to believe that you know the thesis of this is something that is remarkably different than uh, the technologies that we've been using um, throughout my career to build. Uh, solutions using technology. Um, you know, most of our technology uh, concepts are built around a silo of um, permissioning and, you know, building solutions inside of a silo. And that silo is basically a single enterprise, right, or a single company mm -hmm. and a solution for that company. And blockchain breaks that down, right? It gives you a, a solution that transcends the borders of companies and institutions and does it through the techniques that make that possible and, and also keep it secure. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, the I spent a lot of time in public blockchain, particularly a public Ethereum in the early days of uh, my learning uh, and my journey. And um, that helped also inform, you know, a lot of the investments and work that we've made at Microsoft in terms of the technology stacks that, that we've been working with in our portfolio. Um, and um, so basically, you know, when I got together with my colleague in 2015, we divided up the work. You know, this is when I emerged from my, my uh, study and I was convinced that this was a major new pivot on technologies to think about uh, scaled up distributed systems and what all that means. Um, and um, uh, if you look today, you know, I, 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 I'm pretty comfortable making a statement that like block, public blockchains in particular are one of the only examples of really scaled up distributed systems that are that exist mm -hmm. in the world. Um, and so that's a pretty interesting thing because the other, you know, sort of two word unique quality that blockchains bring to the table seems simplistic. Um, and that is um, digital uniqueness. Mm -hmm. But it is. The, re the reason I sort of, you know, say it's simple is because like, okay, yeah, digital uniqueness, great. That that seems like something that shouldn't be hard to do, right? But how do you go and secure billions of dollars on the public internet? That's through a technology called blockchain, which gives you the right foundational elements, consensus, you know, immutable, you know, hashed reference to the prior, you know, transaction block. Right. Uh, and, and you know characteristics that actually let you create digital uniqueness of value and not just money, but anything of value, right? And I that see. could be um, a representation, a digital representation of inventory, a digital representation of, of artwork uh, or antiquities, uh, or even in fact, the digital representation of a human being. Um, and so you know, that was really sort of uh, the emergence of our uh, aha moment that there's something mm -hmm. here at, uh, that we should be spending time on. And you know, for me, Microsoft is not normally a company that jumps into things early. Um, and so this was something I felt was important for Microsoft to do differently than it had done in its past. And you know, if anyone followed Microsoft in the early 90s, you'd see that you know we sort of ignored the internet for quite a few years uh, before we woke up, right? And so I, I lived through that the first time I was at Microsoft and I didn't want that to happen this time around. Um, and I so gotcha. I basically and, finished, right? <laughs> yeah, and I mean, you you said back in 2015, so this was, an, and you mentioned it right when Ethereum was, was coming out at that time. So, yes. um, I mean, I think it really was cutting edge and there's still, I imagine, weren't very many use cases outside of cryptocurrencies. I think that you went on kind of this journey to explore, you know, other use cases and understand Yep. you know, this whole idea of a digital uniqueness. Uh, and I think that is something that is, uh, you know, very, very specific and, uh, well, unique is the word that's coming to mind with blockchain. Um, and I guess the, the question that I was just thinking of, do you think that that digital uniqueness is, is kind of what really sets blockchain apart from, you know, uh, saying like, why can't we just use a database for the solution or something? I think that's kind of the common question yeah. that came up and that you might've explored, right, right. Um, it, during this journey. Well, by the way, like it still comes up, right? Like there are so many uh, yeah. people <laughs> at Microsoft and around the world who are database first people, right? And whenever 
you know, a database person has a, uh, a problem, they think first databases, right? It's kind of like the early days of Excel. When anybody had a problem, they would think Excel is the solution, right? And mm-hmm. there's certainly a lot of people who still think that. Um, and having been a database design and developer for eight years in the early part of my career, I very clearly can, you know, have a perspective on that. And, you know, my answer is I tried to do things that required digital uniqueness in databases. It never worked. Right. It was the context of something in a database that is digitally unique is within a very specific domain. And if if you're thinking about something being digitally unique within an enterprise, that's great. And that is your domain. Right. But as soon as you take that object and try to lift it outside that enterprise and maintain digital uniqueness, now you have a problem. Right. And and this is something that you know people have been struggling with in the technology space for a long time. The origin of blockchain as a distributed system by nature in order to secure money in the open public internet means it can't even survive if it doesn't support something called digital uniqueness in the open domain of the internet, right? And so if you start from there and you say, I can build systems inside of an enterprise with those technologies that allow me to actually create digitally unique representations of physical goods or digital goods, then you're actually starting from a much easier place, right? Because you've solved the foundational problem, which is being able to digitally uniquely represent something. Again, whether it's a human being with a digital digital identity um, or a unique item of inventory in a supply chain scenario, or even in a digital supply chain scenario where you might have software licenses or uh, assets that get created in a game, right? Like Mm -hmm. in a Xbox game, for example. Gotcha. Thanks for for clarifying that. So, Just kind of. One of the ways that I also have a question that's a little bit more flippant is, um, uh, if it was so easy to solve these problems with the tool of your choice, why haven't we solved these problems? Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. You get that a lot in uh, you know in, in solution spaces where people have their favorite tool, right? Um, yeah. And and the reason is because you know the invention of blockchain is that we took the domain of consensus algorithms and encryption and now you know zero knowledge proof encryption um, capabilities and combine that with this immutable audit log right as the underlying data structure um, to actually go and create this new type of data structure which maintains digital uniqueness Gotcha. Yeah, I, I do like that answer, too. I think it's the, the more straightforward one there. Um, OK, so let's get back uh, to maybe just talking about, you know, how the blockchain team got started uh, and that kind of how it led to you having this role that, that you have today. Yeah, so um, in uh, so ending 2015, we had uh, sort of this thesis. We got actually some good executive sponsorship. Um, and exposure at the CEO level of the work that we were interested in doing in the uh, in the blo- blockchain space. Um, and going into 2016, now it sort of became like, you know, what do we do with partners? What, what do we actually, how do we inform ourselves enough as an engineering organization to decide where we can add value without, you know, doing anything silly? Um, like trying to recreate value that somebody else created as an example, I would say that's a silly thing. Or um, uh, you know, putting a large enterprise's foot down into a very small sandbox and squeezing a lot of people, right? Those were not acceptable mm-hmm. outcomes. And so um, we took a very open source friendly, partner friendly viewpoint, um, educated the um, Azure Global engineering teams about, you know, this unique technology and the opportunity with this technology. Um, the first thing we did was um, I actually convinced uh, a gentleman who you had on your uh, stream before, Kel Teeter, uh, convinced him and his boss that he should spend full time in blockchain. And that happened in like January 2016. Um, and the first product that we launched uh, was a collaboration uh, that Kale worked on, um, which is now called the Blockchain Development Kit. But it started out as a Visual Studio extension uh, done in collaboration with uh, a partner in the community consensus. Uh, with a Y consensus. Um, and um, they're still a great partner um, uh, that we work with closely and one of the larger um, uh, development shops in all of blockchain, including uh, Ethereum. Um, and uh, so that was sort of early 2016 was a time when we were trying to figure out, you know, 
aside from you know something obvious like building a Visual Studio extension for blockchain development, um, what 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 else should we do? Right. Mm -hmm. and the 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 group first landed on um, a tool for proof of concepts called Blockchain Workbench. Um, and then eventually, um, once sort of a lot of customers were using that, the, the the team saw a pattern which said, well, a lot of people are doing proof of concepts, but when they want to go to production or take the next step beyond that, they kind of have to start from scratch. So what is it that we can do to help you know ease that next piece of burden? Right? Mm -hmm. um, and that was when we decided to create the Azure Blockchain Service, which is a proper mm -hmm. Azure service, which runs a blockchain stack. Uh, today, that blockchain stack is based on a technology called Quorum that was incubated in JP Morgan. Right. And, and relatively recently, JP Morgan and Consensus came together um, and essentially, consensus, it's now called Consensus Quorum. Um, mm. So they've, they've merged those technology teams together. Um, and Quorum has a proper home outside of a bank, right? Which, you know, a bank's not necessarily known for do, being a big open source development shop, right? Um, although they did a phenomenal job stewarding that project. So that that put, sort of gave us a little bit of a foundation. We had this proof of concept tool, we had some developer tooling, um, and we had um, a service offering, right? Okay. And so from blockchain portfolio perspective, that was a good jumping off point. Mm -hmm. Now in parallel to that, I think it's also important to note is there was an effort that we recognized around um, human identity, digital identity, and digital uniqueness, and the qualities of blockchain that could serve that purpose. Um, really looking at you know people who need an identity who can't get one easily today or prove who they are for various reasons. That could be refugees, it could be trafficked people, it could be just people with no identity, it could be homeless people. Right? There's all right. kinds of situations around the world where people don't have a form of identity. Um, and so we theorized that this technology would actually work well for that. Uh, and that theory turned into an incubation in the identity engineering team at Microsoft, which has been iterating over the last couple mm -hmm. of years and has really been putting out great work um, that is very specifically identity focused, where mm -hmm. the, the net outcome of that work for anybody who um, is a blockchain enthusiast is that they will recognize a blockchain key that's owned by a consumer as an authorization identity that can be allowed into a corporation through an, an OAuth authentication stream. Um, and so they're doing great work to enable that um, with some of the Microsoft technology stack inside of Microsoft like Active Directory and, and the Authenticator app. Mm, um, and awesome. most, of the, most of the work that's done there is actually done also in collaboration with the open source community in an organization called the Decentralized Identity Foundation. Okay, awesome. So, so that was sort Great of know. <laughs> the, the kickoff, right, the bootstrapping of these two different streams of work um, inside of Microsoft um, in, in 2016. And you know, awesome. from there, it sort of just... That sounded like a, a lot of movement <laughs> in 2016. I guess it all didn't just happen then, but it kind of, sure. kind of good to get that overview. There were a, a couple questions that, that came up that were related. So I want to I want to get to that sure. and then kind of start moving on to the actual blockchain development point since someone is, is mentioning that here. Um, yep. the, the couple related questions that came up was, uh, does Microsoft have its own blockchain technology or is it supporting Ethereum or three quarter as an API? Uh, and then a very similar question, is Microsoft making their own blockchain or making dApps via Ethereum? So great, this is a very good question. Um, this is why I was sort of so focused on uh, mm -hmm. the open source partner community as a value proposition. There's so much great work going on in the layer one and layer two technologies of blockchain that it wouldn't necessarily make sense for a development team at a company like Microsoft to go out and say, okay, this is the Microsoft version of you know blockchain technology. Um, even if we were to say fork Ethereum or something else, or right, it's just it doesn't make sense. Like, why fight that? Right? There's mm -hmm. phenomenal yeah. work going on in the community. Just embrace it. Right. So the blockchain technology work that we've done has all been based around enhancing open source technologies so that enterprises and businesses actually can have usage of the technology without having to go down to the low level that a typical open source developer wants to be at, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we're trying to bridge the gap sort of between, you know, the developers are doing enterprise style work and, and the, you know, the command line type of interface stuff that you would do in a standing up a blockchain stack and just making that easier. So we actually support, there's probably about 40 or 50 different partners uh, with 
stuff in Azure um, from R3 Corda to Hyperledger Fabric um, to various version, versions of Ethereum, um, including Quorum um, and others. Um, and then there's you know other like types of tooling and things like that. Um, and then you know our work is really built around um, you know collaborating with those communities. The blockchain development kit, mm -hmm. as an example. Um, you want to pull up the screen? Actually, I'll I'll highlight that. Uh, yeah, let me do that now. So the blockchain development kit um, is specifically something that, based on the history of our work in the blockchain space, being mostly in Ethereum, has actually become a very rich set of tooling um, that is directly linking into some of the value propositions of Ethereum. So we we actually reframed this a little bit in the last um, couple of months to make it actually present much better in that way. Um, just as an example, we have a section here specifically on, you know, how, how, do, how do you work with this thing to, you know, get stuff up and running? It's basically trying to help prompt you as a non-blockchain developer on the types of things that you need to do, help you, you know, do deployments, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, in the Ethereum community, there's a company called Truffle. Um, they've got a tremendous amount of tooling um, that is integrated into uh, this uh, Visual, uh, Visual Studio code extension. Um, uh, Ganache is basically a memory blockchain, memory-based blockchain, so it lets you do local development on your on your developer machine um, through blockchain uh, or blockchain development on your developer machine. Um, Infura is actually an API into public Ethereum or mainnet Ethereum, as it's some, sometimes called. Um, Hyperledger Besu is another um, blockchain uh, stack. This actually um, is one of the options for the new cor consensus quorum um, version. Um, and then the Azure Blockchain Service, which is running Quorum um, and Consensus Quorum once it's upgraded, um, is just the Microsoft-specific backend service that's running a Quorum stack. And so in terms of application development, someone mentioned dApps, um, what you're doing, in, particularly in an Ethereum con con construct, is you're hitting an RPC endpoint. Um, so what is happening here, whether it's with the Azure Blockchain Service, Hyperledger Besu, or uh, Infura, um, or even Truffle, these are all basically talking to an RP, RPC endpoint, which is the Ethereum compatible RP, RPC endpoint. It's so one of the nice things actually about um, in, in the Ethereum compatibility is uh, this is pretty standard and the EVM itself uh, is a standard framework as well. Um, so if you've got uh, an Ethereum fork or an Ethereum code base, um, then all of this tooling will work, right? So for just as an example, um, this type of tooling you're seeing here, this will work on um, Ethereum mainnet, it'll work on Quorum, it'll work on any other Ethereum compatible stacks, it'll work on Ethereum Classic if you're interested in that, though uh, I can talk a little you know, more about some of the challenges with that public chain. Um, it'll work on Celo, which is a fork of Ethereum. Um, so basically this is a one of the, I would say the pluses of this particular community is it is a, one of the largest uh, developer ecosystems that exist in blockchain development. And so what that what that means from a developer's perspective is there's so much information out there, right? right. That, you, know, you can pretty much find uh, open source developers and code that does you know some of the sort of core things that you'd want to do. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That's always a big plus as a developer. Uh, so let's switch gears a little bit again, York, if you don't mind, and, and actually start talking a little bit about, uh, you know, what it takes to be a blockchain developer. So uh, I think the uh, question that I have, maybe kind of a two-part question, but just thinking about first how you've seen the blockchain industry change just over the past few years. So say like, you know, you were just kind of leaving us off in the timeline about 2016 or so. Um, so, yeah. you know, what have you changed? What have you seen change since then? Um, and, you know, how have you seen the demand for for blockchain developers change as well? Uh, you know, what's interesting um, is, you know, like if you look at it, we're in, you know, almost the end of 2020 now. Um, and uh, this, I would say the last year um, has has seen I mean, obviously, a lot of the change in the world, right, <laughs> based on what's been going on. But in terms of blockchain development, I think we're starting to see um, some rationalization around resources, rationalization around uh, developer communities, um, you know, more 
what some people would say in you know in a in a financial context, you know M and A activity, right? Um, but what what that is a signal of is a maturization of the space. And then secondly, you're not seeing enterprises and businesses anymore asking the question of why, right? They're asking how, right? And they're asking how to get started. And that's a pretty big signal about um, you know where where the acceptance of this technology is. And you have massive corporations like major brand names besides Microsoft um, that are very, very much in this space, you know, whether it's uh, federal, in the logistics space, Federal Express, DHL, UPS, all doing work in this space. Mm -hmm. um, if it if it is in, say, the you know operations management space, uh, there's a great company called Splunk, which is a, a telemetry company doing work in this space. Um, uh, across supply chains across the world, whether it's agriculture supply chains with companies like uh, um, uh, Archer Daniels Midland or Cargill, they're, they're heavily doing work in this space, um, or retailers like Walmart, um, as an example. I mean, literally everywhere you work, there are corporations that have pods of work going on uh, in blockchain. And this is one of the things that, um, in you know, in terms of the work that I've been doing at Microsoft, it's really been across three pillars. One is the blockchain portfolio, and we talked a lot about that already. Um, another is um, the usage of blockchain technology in Microsoft businesses. Um, we have a couple of examples of uh, uh, examples of those. One of which is public, which is an Xbox project, by the way. Right. Um, and um, then the third is working with partners, and we've talked a lot about open source open source partners. So the shift that that I've done recently is actually to um, become one of those uh, a leader of one of those businesses using blockchain inside Microsoft because of an oppor opportunity that was presented to me to actually go teach the world what that means and 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 what it means to do it from a usage perspective, not from an engineering team perspective. Um, and so that's you know the the strategy and transformation title that I have in the in the current organization that I sit in. Um, we'll be making a public announcement on the work in about a month, so I don't want to pre um, pre announce uh, anything. Um, okay. But it's, it's a supply chain project, right? Um, and it's a physical supply chain project. Um, and there are a couple of those at Microsoft. Um, and uh, so in in my work, um, you know, I am not a full time developer, but I am interacting with the developers who are building solutions and designing architecture for scale um, and all the qualities that you want to get out of the system if you're a user um, and um, and stewarding the team that actually is going to actually do the hard work that you have to do inside of an enterprise to actually put something into production right so I've taken sort of the blockchain portfolio work that I've done and worked in and now I've moved on to essentially a client side of the fence mm -hmm. in Microsoft and said okay now I'm going to go use this technology um, and actually put it, you know, through the paces of everything I've been telling people they can do with it. <laughs> I see. Oh, that sounds like a nice transition. <laughs> and yeah, definitely excited to, to see in about a month or so what, what project that you've been working on. Um, so I, I think the next question uh, that comes up uh, is, you know, what would you say are just some of the top skills uh, a blockchain developer needs anyway? So, uh, great question. Because you know, people often ask, "Well, what does it mean to be a blockchain developer? You know, what are the skills?" Yeah, and we could even start there. You know, like, what right. does it mean to be a blockchain developer? Is that different than you know a regular software developer? Um, so the, you know? the key difference that you have to realize with blockchain is you're building a distributed system, mm -hmm. and as I mentioned earlier in this conversation, it is completely different build than building a siloed solution that benefits one party. So by definition, blockchain is a distributed system. By definition, that means as a developer, you need to be thinking about how do you develop solutions that live in a distributed system as a DAP, right? A DAP is live on the system, whether it's public mainnet Ethereum or Hyperledger Fabric or uh, you know a, a quorum implementation in a private blockchain scenario. That thing is out there, right, as, a, as an application on the network. Um, how is it secured? How does it deal with the fact that it is live on the network, right, that people can interact with it. Um, and how do you secure it, right? So there's a big area of security audits and security, um, you know, sort of the, what's the attack surface of a smart contract? What's the attack surface of a blockchain node? 
-hmm. in, the, in the security category. And by the way, there's a ton of what I would call um, a dearth of understanding uh, by security engineers and developers in the blockchain space to the point where that's probably one of the highest paid blockchain developer areas right now is mm -hmm. people who understand how to do security and security audits and security reviews. Mm -hmm. um, that know. means you're doing like a full stack review of an application, the smart contracts, the implications, the you know, vulnerability testing, working with the available tools that help you do uh, vulnerability testing of blockchain-based solutions. So that's really the first thing, right? Learn what it means to work in a distributed systems environment. And there's so much um, reading material um, on the public internet about, you know, about different, you know, technology areas that you can you can pretty easily immerse yourself in that. And um, mm -hmm. so that's a that's an important aspect. It's you're not developing a solution for one party inside of a siloed set of firewalls. You're developing for multiple parties. Um, right. And, you know, it is is a big big level of understanding people have to get to because if you don't get that then you might as well be doing a database. Mm, okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that sounds reasonable. I mean, and, and just thinking about, you know, what you just said, like, can you, you know, be a blockchain developer without maybe having some of that understanding of, you know, security? Uh, do you think that that's possible? I think, uh, you know, understanding yeah. what you said, you can kind of be involved in, in so yeah. many different aspects of the development, like if you do, but is there still an opportunity for you if you don't? Uh, yes, um, that's a great question. I mean, um, I just want to bring up this one slide here. Um, sure, I can share on, that when you're ready. On the screen. Um, hang on one second. Let me just get rid of this. Yeah. And I'm going to jump over and look at the questions for now. And I promise that we will get to more questions. We're getting there. Um, but there was one that caught my eye earlier that I, I think that I can answer. Uh, David Randall, you had asked a question about do the Microsoft reactors try to establish blockchain developer or peer support groups within them? We do not. Uh, I do like the question. I mean, and I'd love to know more about, you know, what you were thinking there. And if maybe you have any ideas about what that looks like. If I don't know exactly what that means, but uh, it sounds like it could be a cool thing. So David Randall, if you're still here, uh, please follow up. <laughs> um, give me one second. I'm just going to snip sure. this out of the presentation so that it's separate. Um, where's my tool? All right, well, it's, oh, there it is. Okay. Okay, you can you can go ahead and share the screen. All right, so sharing now. Here we go. So this this is sort of to explain um, roles uh, that you can participate in if you're interested in blockchain, uh, you know, as a as a blockchain developer. Um, on there's a whole bunch of surrounding stuff on the right and on the left. Let's not pay attention to that for a moment. If you pay attention to this section here, um, in this this area right here. This is a full stack application that starts with cloud and blockchain at the bottom. Uh, and then it goes through an interface library called Web3, Web3.js. In this particular case, it's again, this is an Ethereum stack called Quorum running inside the Azure blockchain service. Uh, it's running in Microsoft Azure. Uh, it has a um, Web3.js stack on top of that, which communicates with that, helps to provide an API layer. Um, and the API layer here is an application-specific API layer. Um, and then on top of that, there's some other stuff, which is how do I actually provide permissioning in the context of um, an internal system uh, at, and you know, for, through API um, or a web page through the API. Um, so that in and of itself should tell you that you can be a full-stack developer, you can be a front-end developer, you can be a protocol developer, uh, right. You can be someone who really understands cloud, um, and you can be someone who understands, you know, directory services uh, or or key management services, leveraging uh, tools like virtual HSMs, like the Azure Key Vault, for example. Um, and then on the the right hand side, you could be, you know, somebody who knows how to do data transformation and, mm -hmm. and data analysis and presenting data up through, say, you know, Power BI as a visualization tool. You could be somebody who works on an open source component, which like here, 
uh, where Splunk is actually providing the core foundation of this open source component, um, which lets us extract data from the blockchain and then push it into a database for analysis. So there's all different types of scope from a developer perspective that you could actually do in the blockchain context. In I addition see. to that, surround that with all of the other support groups that you would typically have in an application development project. You've got business analysts, you've got program managers and, and project managers, you've got, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera, right? So, so it's a, basically a, if you think about it from the perspective of, aside from the points I made earlier about what is different, there's nothing different here about like all of the types of uh, ancillary, you know, skills that you'll need to go develop a full end-to-end -end type of solution around this technology, you're basically just replacing the bottom of the stack, right? Swapping out database services that are siloed with mm -hmm. something distributed system. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, I, I think that this is a, a great visual aid here. And I mean, as you're talking, it is, I think, answering one of my earlier questions and the, the previous one about like, do you even need a security background? But I think that this just goes to show just like kind of other software developers, you know, there's well, kind yeah, of uh, you say that you should never roll your own crypto. Right? Okay, <laughs> sure. <And> most <laughs> sure. people have, done that, you know, have gotten into trouble. Um, so, so you don't want to do that. Um, secondly, there is this concept in the Bitcoin space that like you can't do Bitcoin development unless you're a security developer, right? Uh, uh -huh. that, that is for a certain set of reasons, right? But in the more general blockchain space, you can be any type of developer and participate in blockchain. Right? Right. Now, you want to give the protocol level stuff to somebody who's a little more sophisticated, right? Um, or, you know, the other thing is like, if you look at, some people gravitate to front end UX development, right? Some mm -hmm. people gravitate to protocol level development. Some people gravitate to stitching it together through APIs, right? It right. just depends on where you are and, and what you like to do, right? Mm -hmm. Right. I would say right. that you know, somebody, uh, someone who has a hardcore understanding of everything, like a full stack developer, plus also a you know a systems you know product you know product deployment person, they'll be able to actually look at this entire diagram and understand exactly why every element is on that diagram and how they might actually inform or contribute to that. Right. So I see. Yeah. Having a little bit of a broader perspective is also valuable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I, I think I mean that makes a lot of sense um, from what you just said. Uh, I think that there's probably different levels of understanding that you need, you know, depending on what area you want to focus on front and back and full stack. Um, I have to imagine like thinking about, you know, maybe the presentation layer and, and if you're a full stack developer, um, maybe there's less to learn or less that you maybe need to understand uh, uh, about kind of the whole of how blockchain technology works. Uh, if, you're, if you're specifically working on the front end and you are familiar with frameworks like React, for example, you, you maybe can have a, smoother transition just trying yeah. to go and kind of build some, some yeah i mean apps. yeah building a, a user experience or a front end to an api is yeah. really no different than any any other you know ux developer right. uh, experience you know you'll you'll need to understand that the underlying system is a distributed system and what that means but mm -hmm. um, it, the the basic skills uh, you know are still there right in terms of what you're going to do for development perspective gotcha thank you so I'm going to transition over to some of the questions for a moment. Sure. Um, so we got kind of more more general and kind of talking about just you know the need for blockchain developers, but uh, there are questions, of course, particularly around Microsoft and and are we looking for blockchain developers? Um, and and I don't know if you know the answer to that question, York. I personally never know about hiring, so um, but I maybe just like if you have any ideas there, or even like, you know, if we are sure. looking for blockchain developers, like typically, you know, what are we looking for in terms of like skill set or particular areas uh, that. So if you go, um, if you go to the career site, uh, careers.microsoft.com, um, that site actually, you can search for keywords like blockchain mm -hmm. and you'll mm -hmm. be able to find any, any of the blockchain, you know, uh, uh, job applications. What I would say is that um, you know today uh, that there might not be a lot of listings, um, so keep checking back. Um, uh, and those listings might also exist across the company. I also know that like literally 
at Microsoft, there are thousands of people who are blockchain enthusiasts from developers on up, right, um, to different you know types of people in the organization. Um, I literally get like three calls a week internally, um, you know, or instant message, uh, you know, uh, instant messages or emails saying, "Hey, would love to set up an informational uh, to discuss the blockchain work at Microsoft." Um, so there. What, what is most encouraging to me is that there are so many um, uh, you know, people in the organization that have self-identified as people who understand the value proposition of distributed technologies like blockchain, um, and that they're interested in trying to find work at Microsoft in addition to their current role or in exchange for their current role um, mm -hmm. at Microsoft. And that is a huge achievement um, from a few years ago, right? When that wasn't happening as much. Mm. Um, mm. Good to know. Although we've always had like a pretty healthy um, internal, um, uh, if you want to call it Slack channel for lack of a better word, um, you know, that, that is a blockchain enthusiast. This level of excitement about wanting to actually use the technology is now is very different in the last couple of months, which is really an, an interesting signal to me. Yeah. Um, awesome. uh, so, so again, look on the career site. Um, one, one thing I would also say to people, if they really want to work for Microsoft, the key to getting into Microsoft is take any job. <laughs> um, you know, if you're a developer and you can get a job inside of Microsoft, take that job, right? Do it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Look, look to move somewhere else, right? Good uh, answer. Yeah, I mean, I uh, am a program manager, but I have a lot of opportunity to focus on blockchain and other technologies that are exciting to me. And you know, this then brings me closer, so then I can I can connect and, and learn from folks like you and other blockchain team members. So uh, yeah, I think that's probably the the best recommendation there. <laughs> um, about just finding any job at Microsoft. But okay, so let's um, keep going. I'm gonna take one more question from the Twitch chat for now. Um, so kind of going back to maybe more thinking about like skill set, you, you've already kind of mentioned a bunch uh, of different uh, tools and, and technologies, but are there any, uh, any are there any others that you would recommend, um, you know, that might be unfamiliar to folks about like technologies or tools that they need to learn uh, to kind of get them off in the right start? Um, so from the perspective of uh, um, like information resources, it's a combination of um, what I would say, the rich work that's going on in the open source community, the very enterprise-y type of work that's going on at Microsoft and other enterprises. Um, and there's also, uh, for anybody who's like, purely a researcher, there's an amazing amount of work going on, continuing to go on uh, in, re in academic research institutions and other type of research uh, organizations, um, you know, just looking at the, the next advances, right, in terms of blockchain technologies and, and how things are progressing. Um, by the way, I'll, I'll tell you one other important signal is that, uh, and I know this is not uh, that interesting probably to a pure developer, but the interest from central banks about central bank digital currencies is very tied up with blockchain. Um, mm -hmm. And part of the interest is coming, I would say the interest is coming from two places. One, uh, Mark, Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO and founder of Facebook, um, presented to Congress um, maybe nine months ago about what they were thinking about doing with a blockchain technology, which they were pushing to basically have essentially their own chain, which will allow them to do payments in within you know Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp. Um, that scared the daylights out of Congress and every other government around the world because Facebook has so many uh, so, such a big audience, right, of users. Um, that in combination with um, the a lot of the work going on in China around central bank digital currencies has scared every other government to think about central bank digital currencies. So that's a whole area if you're a finance finance person interested in like digital currencies, that's an area of, of interesting interest. In the pure blockchain community, um, there is uh, a whole bunch of blockchain uh, financial Lego blocks in, in an area of the space called DeFi or decentralized mm -hmm. finance, which more than likely decentralized finance is, you know, sort of the future of fintech um, because it is financial 
Lego blocks, right? Um, right. And we're doing some crazy things with <laughs> with different uh, DeFi uh, offerings and DeFi stacks on public Ethereum primarily. Um, and so, you know, the the resources that I sort of stay up with, um, uh, you know, are a combination. And I have actually some links here, which I which I can provide. Um, okay, if, great. If you want to share. Um, hop back over to your screen. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, this is actually a, a hackathon survival guide. So you'll see, um, you know, so a whole bunch of links down in here to, you know, different information about stuff that you could use for participating in, participating in hackathon. But it's also a really good resource for lots of different types of developer tools. Um, so that is a, you know, a great um, set of tooling. Um, there is, um, uh, as I mentioned before, Consensus is one of the main uh, companies in the blockchain development space. Um, they have a developers uh, tab where they have all kinds of tooling um, available. Um, and you can see here, sorry, Megan, are you speaking to me? Uh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. I'm just making comments in the background <laughs> and okay. trying to find links to share. Got it. So you can see here, um, uh, and if you look back at the architecture and the blockchain developer kit that I talked about, um, you recognize some of these words, right? The Web3 um, right. stack, um, the Truffle project, uh, Infura, right? These are Web3 front end. Um, you know, these are just some uh, tools and guides uh, for people to get up and running and understanding what um, what they can use, you know, for you know just getting up to speed on blockchain. There's also some amazing um, if you're if you're a visual person or you like to teach children, um, there's something called eth.build, which is a pretty amazing tool from a guy. Uh, it's an open source tool. It's a guy named uh, Austin Griffith. Um, and he's basically created a visual drag and drop programming language. So you can actually play with um, uh, the blockchain building blocks in a visual format. Um, he's got a mm -hmm. tremendous number of videos on YouTube as well that will teach you about this stuff. Um, so, uh, that, that's, it's just, I guess it's uh, spinning up a sandbox here. Yeah. Um, uh, that one I mentioned, um, there is a, uh, that's not the one we want. Um, I only mentioned this one because I actually stay up to date on a lot of, um, information on what many people call crypto Twitter. Um, Ooh, cool. <laughs> if, if you go to, like, if you follow me. Um, what you're going to find on my Twitter feed is um, right now you'll find, you know, the, the necessarily requisite of political information, but you'll also find mostly people in the blockchain open source community doing lots of lots of interesting things. Um, and uh, so if you look on there, you'll you'll find you'll find some uh, some good information. My, my Twitter handle is down here at the bottom. Um, and so that's actually a really good source to sort of stay up to date. I, I use it to sort of discover things that I didn't know were going on. Um, um, I mentioned ETH.build. It hasn't, there it is. Okay, so this is your sort of visual tool for um, interacting with, uh, you know, live contracts. Uh, pretty, pretty interesting tool, drag and drop. You can move this stuff around. Um, yeah, actually, yeah, this looks very cool. Uh, this reminds yeah. me of another tool. Uh, I mean, I guess it looks very similar. If you've ever seen any of these kind of like building blocks, learn how to code sites, these yeah. are, I think these are fantastic. Yeah. And this one's interesting because it helps you understand what's happening visually um, with the, the transactions that you'll create in a blockchain context, which is a little different than, you know, the way um, the way you might experience development. Um, so it is a useful, useful tool. As I mentioned, uh, this guy, Austin Griffith, who created this, is a wonderful teacher, which is why he created this, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, but he has a ton of videos on YouTube that, that show him actually using it. Now, obviously, he's quite good at it. So um, right. you can get pretty far with uh, the work that he's doing. Yeah. Um, Highly recommend those videos as well. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Megan, I can provide you with um, with the the links here um, that I've shared. Okay, also. I did share many of them in the chat, um, so okay. I, I I hope I got them all covered. Let me know if I didn't chat, but <laughs> I think I got most of them. Uh, okay. And yeah, lots of good stuff there. I think as I mean, pretty much all of it, but I think especially Twitter, that's something that I, I wasn't really thinking, but that is a great place to kind of to be connected to lots of, 
you know, different blockchain enthusiasts, you know, crypto fans out there just kind of get the latest yeah. news. So it's always a great place to find yeah. news for anything. <laughs> And as I said before, you know, for anybody who's interested in some of the deep research behind, um, you know, the different uh, concepts, there's a ton of that going on um, across academic institutions, as well as, you know, sort of research leaning organizations. And including, I mean, the, the thing that I was showing uh, originally on, um, on Twitter here was from Vit Vitalik Buterin, who's, you know, the founder of Ethereum. Um, he was actually referencing um, some work that he wanted to see done in the research community um, to mm. try to help, um, you know, inform, um, you know, something about, uh, you know, an answer he was looking for. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, that's a good way to get an answer to get someone to help you in the Not research right, community. You spend that. your days on Twitter because you could get lost there. Right. Um, Have to. But uh, it's definitely a good place to go find reading material. Um, particularly Absolutely. very current uh, reading material. All right. Well, thank you. I, I think you're bringing that up. It's yeah, okay. Yeah. It happens. Uh, I'm going to ha head over to the chat. We have about 10 minutes left. So I'm going to see what we haven't got to in the chat. Uh, just right. I will try not to ask any more questions for now. Um, so let's see. Uh, there was a question um, specifically from, I think this is Hunting Yeager, a cybersecurity grad. Um, so what are the pivots for a cybersecurity grad with commerce and analytics? Um, anything that they can kind of get into in blockchain with that background? Um, well, there is quite a bit of work going on in the e-commerce space with um, or commerce slash e-commerce space um, with blockchain. So definitely, um, in fact, in my um, my grad class that I teach in e-commerce, um, I go over a lot of the e-commerce tooling uh, mm -hmm. that people are using that's blockchain enabled mm -hmm. and include inclusive of things like um, you know marketplaces for digital goods you know that are unique um, based on the qualities of blockchain, for example. Thank you for sharing that example. Um, yeah, I think having a, a concrete use case or kind of idea is, is helpful. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, let's see what else that we can answer. Give me a moment. There's been a string of questions coming in. Um, Someone earlier was wondering if, you know, you can speak a little bit more, York, about um, Xbox's work with blockchain. I had shared um, just the kind of the customer story, but I don't know if there's anything else interesting that you oh, can yeah, share sure. uh, kind of about about what's what's happening specifically with that project and what they're doing. All right. Yes. In the follow ups, um, I didn't read the whole question, but are you making tokens for gamers that can be earned while playing Xbox games? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, by the way, just uh, to complete the e-commerce um, concept, this is one of the um, commerce marketplaces. Um, that's basically an example that I use where you can, you know, essentially uh, go and purchase rare items. These are unique because of the qualities of blockchain, um, and it could be anything from playing cards to, you know, all different types of um, uh, things like I mentioned before, art, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so Xbox Royalties is the blockchain project that's uh, publicly announced um, at Microsoft. Um, and what they've done is they are using blockchain to facilitate faster settlement on royalties between Microsoft as a gaming platform and game developers who need to be paid and that's all based on consumer usage. Right, and so what they've done, and there's a lot of reading on this, and that's why I put this, you know, just the search up on the screen here, um, that, you know, it started in 2018 when they first announced it. Um, and it's essentially, it's also running the Quorum Ledger Azure blockchain service um, that I showed before in the architecture on the screen. Mm -hmm. um, and all of, you know, here's here's the Microsoft, um, uh, blog about it or news news point about it. We were working in concert with uh, Ernst & Young. Um, actually, I think they still are working with Ernst & Young um, as a consultancy um, to help do the 
uh, the work here, figure out the business problem and, and how to solve that particular business problem. Um, so that is uh, one of the public examples of a business line at Microsoft. It happens to be the Xbox business line and the finance team actually using blockchain technology to facilitate faster reconciliation of the payments that need to go to blockchain game developers. I'm sorry, not blockchain game developers, developers, right? And they're using um, blockchain to facilitate that. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, yeah, that that helps a lot to answer that question. Uh, so it's not exactly so, and tokens to, for, for to, game developers, but helping to pay out those roles. Yeah, so I mean, to add on to that, you know, I would love to see um, uh, digital assets, in-game digital assets tokenized, um, which would allow you to, one, as a, as a user or a gamer, own those digital assets, potentially port them from one game to another, um, sell them on a marketplace if you don't, if you've outgrown a game, for example. Those are all interesting. Uh, um, that's a, a very cool use case, yeah. Um, so that's not what's happening now, just to be clear. Right? Um, <laughs> the, but uh there you know tomorrow so okay okay gotcha yeah the, i mean the next question that i was i was looking at here were what are some of the blockchain projects that you think is exciting or that you wish to exist um so i think york the example that you just gave was a, a really great one to kind of having these like transferable game tokens that you can you can get in and kind of spend uh yeah i think that's a great one any others that come to mind Things that I wish existed. Yeah. Um, well, I actually think if um, central bank digital currencies existed, it would remarkably change um, uh, financial flows in the world. Um, mm -hmm. Which, uh, if we did that in the context of blockchain technology, would be very interesting. Um, and it would, I think, it would unlock a lot of efficiencies. Thank you for sharing. Um, I think I got to most of the questions by now. So let me just take a, a, a look through and see if there's anything else we should get to. And if there are any final questions, let us know now. Um, but yeah, I, I don't see anything else right now, York. I think one more question that I have, and you might have already answered this with kind of, you know, maybe Twitter being the best place for this, but um, just, you know, what, what recommendations would you have, do you have uh, for any, you know, anyone watching this and just wanting to connect with blockchain developers or just kind of find a, a community of other, of other folks to, to connect with and share ideas? So there is also a lot of, um, uh, there's Discord communities, there's, um, uh, as I mentioned, there's Slack communities, which are a little bit clo more closed. Um, Crypto Twitter is a great sort of public view into most of the communities, so it's a good place to go um, to look for blockchain. Um, yep. The other one is um, Telegram has a decent number of um, blockchain-oriented groups on it. Um, I would say those are probably, um, your best sort of areas to look at, um, you know, in terms of you know getting into different communities. Um, if you, Can have, you clarify you, what Telegram is, sorry, I don't know if I'm the only one. <laughs> oh, maybe. Come on. <laughs> I know, I know. I have to look it up here. I really. Um, I, Telegram is one of the messaging apps that's out there. It's a secure messaging app. Ah, uh, good to know. Yeah. Um, the uh, the other thing is, you know, if you have a particular interest in uh, humanitarian applications of blockchain. Um, I actually sit on the board of a company called Blockchain for Social Impact. Um, and the focus of that organization is really educating and um, uh, uh, informing both the sort of the, the not-for-profit sector and also um, the not-for-profit use cases and bringing light to those because there are many out there, but they're not that visible. Um, and then also connecting developer, the, the developer community into those you know, different projects. So that organization, um, blockchainforsocialimpact.com, uh, runs a, um, an environmental climate-focused incubator, um, which culminates oh, awesome. in Earth Day. Um, we have a, uh, and that is basically working with uh, developers in the community. We did um, bounties uh, for different projects in the in the categories of plastics and solutions, sustainable cities, carbon footprint, and peace and prosperity, um, with a bunch of different group 
technology teams um, in the blockchain space. Um, and uh, um, then we also have a annual conference that um, mm -hmm. we just held during uh, United Nations General Assembly Week. Um, and uh, we'll be you know, continuing that uh, throughout next year as well. Awesome. So that's a pretty good resource if you have sort of like a humanitarian um, interest as well. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So I just I just shared the link uh, to that and chat. Um, it sounds like there's lots of great information there. Um, I think especially for me, just kind of looking at this and learning about all of, you know, the different use cases uh, that you can use blockchain for social good. I think that's awesome. Yeah, and there's great examples out there. I mean, this had the blockchain for social impact um, because we just we did the incubator, which is a six week incubator um, earlier this year, which also helps train people on these, you know, what's an applicable blockchain concept um, with lots of mentors. We have about 70 mentors from the impact space and from the not for profit space who can inform you right about the use cases um, and help guide the development teams um, to success. Um, the and a lot of that information from that incubator is on the blockchain for social impact um, site, um, and uh, you know it's a it's a pretty good resource you know for anybody who's sort of got um, interest in you know how the technology can be applied in 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 that in that particular category or how to do good with technology, which is something I try to weave in in everything that I do now. All right. Gotcha. Well, yeah, thank you again for, for all that information. I'm definitely uh, going to check that out more. I hope you all do as well. Um, and I think with that, York, we're going to close out uh, our chat for now. Um, I think we've gotten to a good amount of questions today. And thank you. Really appreciate the time uh, just to hear, you know, about your journey with blockchain, uh, how that's, you know, related to Microsoft's journey with blockchain and just kind of getting lots of different resources and tools about how to get into blockchain development. Thank you so much for your time. Um, and yeah, I, I think that is it. So I, I've left some information in the chat. This recording will be up, folks can watch it. I will also be back uh, tomorrow afternoon for another blockchain stream where I'm gonna be using uh, Open Zeppelin to write some contracts. So. Nice. Feel free to check that out. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you all. I hope everyone has a, a good day, good evening, wherever you are. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. Bye.